Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint the miniatures in this box solely with this box using just the paints inside as well as just the starter paintbrush inside and though I prefer to use alternative brushes which I kind of suggest you do too it can be done as you'll see in this video <laughs> Before you even open this kit, you will need a good pair of hobby clippers. Games Workshop has a pair themselves, which I have tried, and they are great quality, besides the fact that they are rather costly for starting players. And these, which are Zuron, are less expensive and absolutely lovely. But what you are specifically looking for in a pair of cutters is very thin tips. As thin as the eye in the Infernus Marines, preferably so you can easily cut out the miniature pieces and any future miniatures off the sprue without leaving a big wad of plastic on the miniature that could easily happen if you happen to use unqualified cutters. You may also want a good hobby knife, which you do not, and I repeat, you do not use to cut the miniatures off the sprue. These knives are solely used to clean any excess plastic off the bits you have already cut off with the clippers. The knife that I'm using is the latest Games Workshop hobby knife, which I like just fine, but there's also this one is great brand Zona. If you prefer not to use a knife though, you could file the excess off with a fine set of files or use a mold line remover, which Games Workshop has available to buy singly or you can find in the paint and tool set. I personally will be using the back edge of my hobby knife as a mold line remover on top of using it as a knife since that works just as well as a regular mold line remover and I don't need to switch between tools. Inside this kit, you'll find the sprues to build three Infernus Marines from the Ultramarine Space Marine chapter. You'll also get six high quality Citadel paints and a starter brush I frankly wouldn't give the time of day to, but as I said, I'd only use what was in this kit to paint the models with. I'll use the brush anyway. The paints in this set are Agrax Earthshade, a specialized paint called a shade, that adds shadows to the crevices of your miniatures as well as tinting it towards the color of the shade. Just a tint though. Agrax Earthshade is a dark brown shade so anything it covers will be tinted slightly towards dark brown. Which is why I'll be thinning it with water as I'm using it over blue to give it a more subtle effect. Since I prefer to keep to the blue rather than make it brown but I'll be using it right out of the bottle over gold. The next color is Abaddon Black, a base paint, and yes, I shake my paints every time I pick them up and always before I use them because that's what every paint needs to work its best. Remember that a paint is pigment within a solution and the heavier pigment will settle at the bottom of the bottle in time. So make sure you blend your paints by shaking or if it's giving you trouble mixing with a stir stick before you use the paint. Abaddon Black is a base paint that goes on opaque with a single coat but out of the bottle, you'll find it is a little too thick to use on a miniature. Think of it as a concentrated form of the paint that you are going to want to use. You want to take some out and thin it down with a little water or medium. So when you apply it to your miniature, it'll be an even non streaky coat every time. It's better to thin down a little too much and just add a second or third coat than to accidentally cover up details due to its thickness. The next paint in the set is another base paint called Macrag Blue. This base paint, much like Abaddon Black, is thicker than what you would apply to your miniature directly, so you'll be thinning this one down as well before you apply it to your model. The fourth paint in the set is less of a paint and more of a paste, really. It is called Armageddon Dust, and it should not be applied with a paintbrush at all. Its use is to apply it to the base of your model so that when it dries, it'll look like ground that your space marine is traveling over. I'll show you in the video how I used a piece of sprue to apply this to the model. The fifth paint is Balthazar Gold and is a metallic base paint that looks very coppery in the bottle but on the model will be a golden color that can cover in a single coat. Again, you'll want to thin it down a little before applying it. The last paint is an off-white color called Corax White and it is another base paint. This white generally covers in two coats, maybe three depending on how thin you made it before applying it, but is surprisingly good at covering even the black when you make mistakes. 
So as long as you're using thin coats with your paint, you'll be able to play around with color schemes you like and still be able to cover up any mistakes or changes you wish to make. Win moderation. And lastly, we have the starter brush. If you notice that your starter brush is curved at the top due to being squished in the box, which sadly sometimes happens, do not attempt to use the brush for details. It isn't worth the aggravation. Believe me, I'm only a masochist doing it. Unless you want to become incredibly skilled through trial and error, because if you can paint details with this brush, and once you upgrade to a better detail brush, you will be so thrilled at how easy it is to use. All right, so the first step is to assemble the miniatures. These minis are push fit, which means you do not need to use the glue to assemble them. Don't take every single piece off of the sprue at the same time. Follow the guide and take them off bit by bit. You certainly can use glue if you wish, and I think familiarizing yourself with the use of plastic glue is beneficial early on because not all your future models will be push fit. In fact, the Leviathan box set currently available as well as the starter sets available are push fit, so you could pick up those next if you want to stay away from glue for a while yet, but I do think you should familiarize yourself with it. Now, I am painting these fully assembled, but you may find it easier, well, no, you will find it easier to keep these models' arms and backpacks off until after you have painted the body. So you can get at their chests and belt pouches with ease, and then you can push in the arms and backpacks. I didn't, but you could. Also, even though I will be applying the base paint directly to the models in this video, I always advise to pick a spray primer and prime these miniatures before you paint them. That way you won't encounter paint beating on your miniature and not sticking to the plastic properly. You can get around that with multiple layers of paint like I will be doing, but again, just use a spray primer, particularly if you are able to get a spray primer that matches the color scheme of your army. It'll make it so much faster for you. If you've never primed a miniature before, I'd suggest practicing priming the empty sprue first to see how the primer will work. Remember when you're priming, you do not want the miniature to look wet. That means you added too much paint and you'll want to spray across the miniature rather than directly at it. Now that these three are built and ready to go, I'm going to paint them simultaneously. But so you can better follow along, I'll show each of the paint schemes one after the other, starting with the ultramarine. And that means McCrag blue. Some of these Citadel base paints can act like a primer and can be applied directly to the plastic, though if you're going to be painting a lot of them with McCrag blue, I suggest instead to go for the McCrag spray primer to save you time. Though that doesn't mean you wouldn't want this McCrag blue base paint, because if you make a mistake and need to touch up your blue, you'll want the base paint for that. But since I'm only using the colors out of this box, I'll be thinning this base paint down just slightly by dipping my brush in the water and mixing it into the blue I took out. I always clean my brush after making the mix so that I have a controlled amount in the brush. And I'm using the consistency I had mixed rather than the thicker paint left in the brush. And with that thinner paint, I'll be applying this McCrag blue all over the miniature. A first coat can easily look patchy and that's normal and wanted since you know you didn't leave the paint too thick and will keep all the details of the model. The first coat is solely to act as a primer for the rest of my coats of paint. Once that first layer has dried, I'll add a second slightly thinner layer to brighten up the blue, but anywhere I've already decided will be another color, I won't bother to add a second coat of McCrag blue. After that, I'll start hating my silly paintbrush that has a curve on it, but while I do that, I'll start adding details, beginning with painting a thinned Corax white to his fire support symbol on the right shoulder and the tiny skull on his chest, which yes, I did a terrible job of, but if you could see my brush, you can see my difficulty. And then a thinned Abaddon black to his pistol holster, belt pouches, flamer, the wings on his chest plate, and his body glove peeking between the pieces of his armor. And though I could have added the Balthazar gold as well at this point, I instead take the Agrax Earthshade, which I wouldn't use for shading blue generally, but since I'm following the guide for this, I thinned it down with water as I went until it mostly stayed only in the recesses, 
giving more definition to all the cracks and crevices of the miniature while staying off the main sections. When you are using a more fluid paint like a shade or contrast paint, make sure you catch any pooling paint as you go because what you leave behind is what the model will look like once dried, but a little darker. So only leave what you like the look of behind and grab any excess while the paint is freshly down. As you can see when it is dry, there is a definite difference with and without a shade. The crevices are darker, the fire support insignia is picked out more by the dark shadow surrounding it, and the McCrag blue has been darkened overall. And now I apply a thin Balthazar gold to all the parts I want to make pretty, like the ultramarine symbol on his left shoulder pauldron, the edges of the shoulder pads, the wings that I have prepped in black, and I choose to try a bit of a dry brush over areas of the gun I thought would look good in metal, but I didn't want the metal to look the same as that of his armor. When you're dry brushing, even with a brush not designed for dry brushing, just grab a piece of cardboard and clean most of the paint off the brush and use just the barest amount to dry brush and catch the edges and raised areas of the miniature while leaving the recesses untouched. Oh, and just before I did these gold details, I snipped off the offending curb on my brush's bristles. I couldn't stand it anymore. No, I don't normally suggest hacking at your paintbrush in this fashion because most paintbrushes, most paintbrushes are perfect just the way they are. For these details, just get a smaller detail brush. It's the easiest way to resolve your problems. For me though, since I'm challenging myself for your sake to just use what's in the box, I had to resort to drastic measures because the brush simply didn't have the capacity to do what I needed it to do. But now it does, mostly. I went back on the model with my Craig Blue and lightened up where I thought the most light would hit if you were under a strong light source. Adding the lighter color in circles or ovals on curved parts facing upward, or as lines across flat areas that have light hitting their surfaces. If you are painting multiple marines at the same time, which is always a good idea, you can highlight different areas on each of them and see which places look more natural and adjust the other marines to match. I'll add Armageddon dust to his base, removing the marine first so I can spread it with ease across the flat surface rather heavily, but making sure not to leave any unusual peaks since the peaks would dry as peaks. And then I added the marine back into place so his feet sink into the wet texture and looks more naturally involved in his environment. If you ever want to make the boots look covered in the so-called dust at his feet, thin the texture paint down with water and with a cheap throwaway brush, use the texture paint like a wash, think of it like Agrax Earthshade in this case, and apply it to the boots in layers until you're satisfied with the result, making sure to let it dry between layers. But I'm not going to do that in this video since I don't want to ruin the brush I'm currently working with. What I'm doing instead is I added a little Corax white into the McCrag blue and I'm doing another highlight. This one more focused with smaller edge highlighting and smaller circles, only where I had already put back the McCrag blue on top of that McCrag blue covered in Agrax Earthshade. It will look a little harsh now, but will become more blended once dried since paint always dries a little darker than it looks when wet. And if I end up with areas too stark for my taste, I can go back with a thinned McCrag blue and soften that transition from light to dark blue. Again, if you're painting multiple marines at the same time, you can choose different areas to highlight on each one and see where you like it most and adjust the others to match. And remember, thin your paints just a little bit so that it goes over the miniature smoothly. Had I not thinned this down a little bit with water, it wouldn't be going over smoothly it would be leaving too thick of a paint streak. And I'm also emptying out my paintbrush and getting fresh paint regularly. Very seldom have I had paint in my brush for longer than 30 seconds before cleaning it out and getting a fresh amount of paint. And the last step I do after I'm satisfied with the level of doneness on this Infernus Marine is clean up the black on the base of the miniature so it's nice and sharp looking and there he is, 
I did add a little Agrax Earthshade over the middle of his gun and the wings of his chest plates insignia. And like I mentioned, I went back and adjusted the paler blue areas with a little McCrag blue. And though he isn't perfect, since I didn't have the heart to use the brush I had on his eyelids or teeny buttons, I would call him at least ready for action. The first three paints I'd get at this point is a bright red, like contrast paint, ball red for his eyes. So you'd want to put Corax White on first to really make the ball red pop because ball red is transparent. Also, I'd get a silver metallic to embellish his gun further like Lead Belcher or Iron Hand Steel and a leather brown like Steel Legion Drab or XV88 to grab any leather straps or that gun holster instead of leaving it black. You could also get the highlight color from a Crag Blue, which is Calgar Blue, so you don't have to mix your own highlight each time if you want it. Now the next two marines, I'm just winging it to see what color schemes I can come up with with such a tiny color range. On this marine, I thinned down Corex White and applied it all over the miniature in one coat, which leaves quite a mess since the paint is thinned and white paint on less dry brush doesn't naturally coat a multifaceted surface in a single coat. But after the first coat is dried, and it is important to let that first coat dry completely since it needs to adhere to the plastic, I added a second coat of Corax White, a little thinner than the first, skipping over areas I intended to paint with another color. At first, I planned to use Agrax Earthshade entirely over the white to see what that would look like, but the white was looking so pretty just as is and... As I was adding the gold details and then the McCrag blue details that by the time I'd started adding the Abaddon black details, I decided I'd just leave the white alone. Mostly since Agrax Earthshade really isn't the wash to put over white, I think. And if I wanted to thin a shade to put over white anyway, I really wouldn't want to use water. I would use contrast medium so it retains its flowing power and not become splotchy by the dilution from water. Though I did play around with Agrax Earthshade mixed with Abaddon Black on his gun holster, which I came back to because it didn't look quite right, and painted the middle of each section with just some thinned Abaddon Black. It gave an interesting aged leather look, I think. I also dared to paint the eyes of this marine with McCrag Blue, since by this time I'd cut the tip of the brush down and was pleasantly surprised to find that I didn't get the paint all over the place. But it may have also been because by now I could tell that the Corex White covered black, blue, gold, anything in one or two coats. Sometimes just one coat. So I was prepared to fix it up if I had made a mess of it anyway. And as a fit of fancy took me, I mixed the Balsasar Gold with the McCrag Blue to see what that would create. And then I added some Corex White to make this pale blue-gray that I ended up covering the wings on his chest plate with because it looked pretty and I hadn't decided what other color to go with. The last touches I did for this model then was, besides cleaning up later with more Corex White, was his other shoulder paltron trimmed with Abaddon Black and his body glove underneath his armor going black. And at some point adding the Armageddon dust to his face and then he was done. And by pure accident he kind of reminds me of world eaters in the 30th millennia even though he is supposed to be a subchapter of the Ultramarines because of his Ultima on his shoulder. This last fellow I applied two coats of thinned Abaddon Black too, and then because I had no idea how I wanted to do the color scheme, I started adding edge highlights of thinned Balthazar Gold to all of the armor edges. I couldn't exactly do a tidy job with the brush I had, so I had to fix up areas with more Abaddon Black here and there, but I had fun. And I decided to make one of his shoulder pauldrons white, and while that was drying, I got his face covered in the Armageddon dust, and then painted his Ultima with McCrag blue. From there, I continued adding thinned Corax white and thinned McCrag blue until I created what I would call a funky medieval knight kind of color scheme to my space marine. You must let me know which color scheme you like the best out of these three. And make certain to ask me any questions you can think of about painting space marines. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make certain you let me know which of the three space marine color schemes you like the best, if at all, if you didn't like them. <laughs> let me know too in the comments below, but uh, for the paintbrush that I was using. So.
such as it was, I think I did pretty good. Don't let your painting skills be limited by the paintbrush. That's just fine. That's just a fine brush for using, for basing, and for not even for dry brushing, for basing like I did, but uh, get yourself some nicer brushes, uh, particularly for doing those details because it is painful otherwise. All right, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much to our patrons and YouTube members that allow me to buy kits like this and show you how they work. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And here the three are one last time. And I'm not certain whether I'm just getting used to these challenges or whether these colors actually allowed me to go full out on three different color schemes that I really enjoy the look of. I do definitely miss red and silver, but beyond that, I think I'm pretty satisfied.